Our whole lives, all right. Hey, play for the guy next to you the whole the whole night, all right. The name on the front of your jersey, the name on the back of your jersey. Grayson McCall exemplifies what it is to be a quarterback through leadership, heart, determination, poise, and the innate ability to remain even keel in the most rigorous moments that this game has to offer. Grayson McCall is a three-time Sun Belt Player of the Year. 2020 Sun Belt Freshman of the Year, three time first team all Sun Belt, 2020 Cure Bowl MVP. Put it like this Grayson McCall's body of work is astounding. But in order to know how Mr. McCall arrived here, we must first understand where he's from. Uh, what was your childhood like? Some of your earliest memories, those nostalgic things that you remember about growing up. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, start, started playing ball at a, at a very young age. Uh, you know, begged my parents when I was about six years old to to uh, start playing football. And uh, where I'm from, you couldn't start the contact football until about seven years old. So they got me into a flag football league at six. And, uh, you know, I really didn't, really enjoyed it, um, being out there with the guys and running around as a little kid. And, um, you know, from there, I started playing contact football at seven, um, uh, a, local, a local league. And, um, you know, that, that went all the way up until middle school. Um, I played uh, baseball as well when I was younger, so a little two-sport athlete. And then when I got into middle school, um, you know, I, I still wasn't playing quarterback yet. I was uh, more of a running back, played defense a little bit, and uh, and uh, still played basketball. And then I started playing baseball – or I'm sorry, I started playing basketball in middle school. Um, so did a little three-sport action there for a while. Um, when I got into eighth grade, uh, I decided to stop playing baseball. So – um, kept playing football and basketball uh, up throughout high school and, um, you know, decided there at the end that I was a little bit better at football and basketball. Uh, although I did have high hopes for my, my hoop dreams, you know, they, they just didn't work out how I planned. But, um, yeah, man, you know, love football um, since I was a young kid. And, um, you know, I always had a lot of passion for the game, love watching people and learning from them. And um, so, you know, it just stuck, man. And, um, you know, I got a, a few opportunities to come play college football and, um, you know, it's kind of history from there. Decided to come to Coastal Carolina, play for a great staff, be with a lot of good guys. So um, kind of just, you know, took off from there. And, uh, you know, I've loved every minute of it. So you said you grew up, uh, didn't quite all start off at quarterback. You played a little bit of running back. What position did you play on defense? Yeah, so when I was younger, I was actually an outside linebacker. You know, I was a, I was oh, okay. long. I was uh, one of the bigger kids on the team, so they put me on defense. Um, you know, I was never really afraid of contact, so I – love sticking my head in there and uh you know making tackles and things like that but um you know i always love the having the ball in my hands and um you know as a running back obviously you don't have much of a choice so um you know i was a little bit faster back in the day so i could make some guys miss and things like that but um you know they put me all over the place and you know i really enjoyed it just being out there yeah hey, you could just tell like just watching you that you just love the game ultimate competitor uh, certainly love watching you playing so in high school, you said you play basketball. So, was there any? What was that experience like? And was there anybody that you kind of modeled your game after? Or if you were to comp yourself to somebody based on your play style, who would it be? You know, I I, I wasn't I wasn't that good. So, you know, I don't want to I don't want to <laughs> do that thing. Buddy, but, um, you know, I was uh, I was really just a hard worker. Kind of the same things you see on the football field. Um, mm -hmm. um you know, kind of the effort guy, the high motor guy. Um, you know, when the ball is on the ground, you know, I was one of the first ones to dive on the on the wood and. And, and you know get the ball and things like that so um you know i, I was more of a, of a facilitator than a score um you know i might give you six eight or, or ten a game but um you know always crashing the boards um always facilitating finding the shooters and things like that so um you know i wish i could have worked on my game more um but you know with high school and um you know the north carolina playoffs we would always go um you know two three four weeks into uh, the playoffs to where basketball had already start <clears throat> already started so uh, I would get a late jump but uh you know just get out there and you know kind of run around stay in shape in the off season and um you know still got the competitive aspect of it and uh, you know I just love being out there while in high school Grayson McCall wasn't heavily recruited deemed as a dual threat quarterback and ranked by recruiting services as a two or three star prospect trailing behind other notable North Carolina quarterbacks Sam Howell, Garrett Strader, Kanique Bonner-Stewart, just to name a few. Nevertheless, Grayson McCall never wavered. He continued to put the work in, continued to play with a chip on his shoulder, and soon he would become a household name.
So in high school, you and Sam Howell had a thrilling overtime game. I don't know how how much you remember that game versus Sun Valley High School. They edged you all in overtime, forty two to forty one. What do you remember from that game? It was fantastic watching the highlights. Yeah. So the first thing that comes to mind is uh, I played with a broken arm that game. So oh, I had wow. a I had a huge cast uh, on my left arm, bubble wrap, uh, nice and big. So you know I didn't I didn't practice that much throughout the week. They didn't know if if I'll be able to play or not, but. Um, such a big rival between Porter Ridge and Sun Valley, and obviously uh, they had Sam Howell over there. So, um, you know, I really wanted to be out there. I knew I could give us a good shot if if I was out there playing. And, um, you know, it was, it was back and forth the whole game. You know, Sam's obviously an unbelievable player. They had a good team that year, uh, a lot of good skill guys. So it was just back and forth the whole game. Um, we we came – or we actually – we had the lead. We were up two scores late in the third. Um, they came back. We just couldn't stop that offense. Sam was like – Sam's a bowling ball out there in high school. You know, we just couldn't bring him down. Um, and I remember we got him to overtime. They they got the ball first and scored. Um, and then and then we scored on the second or third play. And coach um, coach decided to go for two and and try to take him out. Then we had the shot and uh, just came up short on the two point conversion. But uh, just just an unreal game. I, I'm sure you've seen the highlights. I think they're on YouTube somewhere. Yeah, but, yeah, no, they're, um, they're still on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, just, just a back and forth battle, man. Just a, a, a incredible game. Wish we. Could have finished it out and came out on top, but um, you know, I'll never forget that one. That was a really good game. Yeah, it, it really was. And even seeing it, you know, six years later, it was it was a fantastic game. So while at uh, Porter Ridge, you were dynamic running the ball. As a senior, you rushed for fourteen hundred yards and twenty one touchdowns. Coming out of high school, and I guess it's kind of good to be able to look at it in retrospect. Do you feel like you weren't highly recruited because a lot of teams just deemed you as a running quarterback? Yeah, I do. I, I really do, man. You know, um, we we ran a a very stout triple option look in high school. We had a really good offensive line, um, had two really good backs that could get it done. And, um, you know, it's what the staff knew. It's what they had ran. They had a really good game plan every other week. And, um, and you know, that that's what it was. I didn't I didn't get to throw the ball as much as I would like to. Uh, I didn't have any three, four, five-star guys to throw to. You know, I had I had guys that I grew up with that just loved playing the game. And, um, you know, not, not to talk down on them at all. They were great. They did, they did a really good job for me. But, um, you know, nothing just, um, you know, arm strength wise and, and really throwing the ball down the field stood out to anybody. So um, that's where camps and, you know, me me getting in front of these coaches and showing them that I did have arm talent was big for me. Um, so I think that's why I kind of flew under the radar. But um, once I got in front of some people and they saw me throw and um, they saw that I was dynamic and they saw that I could do all of it, um, that's when I started getting some of my offers. But, um, you know, even early in recruiting, the schools that were – that were taking a chance on me were, were schools like Army or um, small FCS schools that ran, you know, a triple option principle in their offense. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy the way it worked out. Uh, you know, luckily Coastal had some triple option aspect of their game and um, they thought I could come here and run it well. So, um, you know, forever grateful for, for, you know, Coach Shadwell and Coach Mobley had taken a chance on me and giving me the, the opportunity to come and play here. That is amazing. So here at CFB Nation, we're, we're really known for our rapid fire questions. We like to kind of, okay, we threw some questions out there, but let's let's get to know a little bit more about you. So what's your favorite pregame meal? Pregame meal, uh, steak and pasta, uh, oh, some, some, some type of veggies on the side. Ah, that is perfect. Uh, what is a quote that you live by? A quote that you live, uh, let's see. Um Don't uh, don't uh, not be ready for an opportunity when it awaits. Always always be ready for the opportunity. If it, even if it doesn't come, uh, you always be ready. So when the opportunity comes, um, you're never not ready. You're always you're always ready for that opportunity. I might have to steal that one. <laughs> I, I, I like that one a lot. So who's on your pregame playlist? What do you listen to before your 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 game? Yeah, uh, I'm a, I'm a big Rod Wave guy, man. I, I like the I like the Rod Wave tunes. Uh, you know, kind of slow it down a little bit. Not not such a, you know hard hard music and kind of kind of calms me down a little bit. So I'm a big Rod Wave guy. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Rod Wave and a pregame. Oh man, I <laughs> I know that gets you ready. Uh, <laughs> are you are you a gamer? You got a favorite video game? I am. I play a little bit. I really like the new Call of Duty and uh, obviously play a lot of Madden and 2K things like that. But uh, I don't play as much as I'd like to. But I definitely mm -hmm. like getting on the game with the guys and you know just shooting it up. Yeah, yeah, I'm. I'm sure uh, that duty calls certainly uh, 
You said Madden and 2K. Those are games that I play a lot. 2K, like, what do you play? Do you normally play, like, regs? Do you get in a park or pro-am? What do yeah, you so usually it's just uh, me and the roommates, you know, going back and forth, talking crap. We'll have to settle it on the blacktop. You know how that goes. Uh. Uh, <laughs> a little 3v3 action. But um, I'm, more, I'm more so a Madden player, man. I really enjoy playing Madden. Do you? Oh, man, I wish we had some time, man, to... The, the, the put up the well, sticks. Hey, we'll, yeah. yeah, we'll have to figure that yeah. out. We'll, we'll get that right. Yeah, we, we certainly gonna have to figure that out. Uh, but I agree with you. Uh, Madden is certainly one of my favorite games, and 2K probably right now takes the cake. Um, so what do you remember most about signing your letter of intent to play at Coastal Carolina? Yeah, so it's kind of weird for me. Um, obviously, uh, Coach Motley, the previous coach before Coach Chow, well, he recruited me, and um, you know, just a couple days, maybe a week before signing day. Um, Coach Mowgli announced that, that he was stepping down um, and resigning. So, um, you know, it, it was kind of a smooth transition because Coach Chowell was the quarterback coach at the time, so he recruited me. Um, but but just an unbelievable day, man. I remember um, going in and, and all my teammates in there and, you know, all the other guys beside me that were signing their letters of intent. Um, just an unbelievable moment, man, you know. Didn't have didn't have all the the big Power Five hats in front of me, <laughs> to pick them up, nothing like that. Everybody knew I was going to Coastal Carolina, but um, it was a surreal experience, man. You know, something I'd dreamed of since a young kid, and um, you know, kind of whenever you sign that paper, it's a lot of weight coming off your shoulders. So um, it was an unbelievable day, man. Glad I got to spend it with the guys that you know I grew up with. That's fantastic, and that's something that I've heard a recurrent theme throughout this interview is uh, spending time with the guys. Like where I grew up at, my parents met. On, uh, on the street that I grew up on My grandparents lived on that street um, I've been friends with the same guys For over three decades now So that it's important to me to hear that from you So I'm, I'm going to gonna give you your flowers um, I know a lot of times quarterback is next play mentality You really don't like talking about your accomplishments But let's, let's talk about some of those accomplishments um, You're one of the most efficient passers In the history of our sport You currently rank third in efficiency all time With 78 touchdowns, 8 interceptions And a career percentage 70% Like, how has your attention to detail And your decision making been so good? You know, man, it's, uh, it's, it's what I do in practice every day I really take pride in taking care of the ball And not turning it over And um, you know, just being an, an elite decision maker, um, you know, no matter what it is with the ball, um, you know, I have to make a decision. It's got to be quick and it's it's got to be the right one. And, um, you know, sometimes it, when you don't make the right decision um, and it, it's great coverage, you know, I, I believe that I can always beat great coverage with a better ball. And, um, you know, I've, I've been fortunate to play around a lot of really good guys here, um, a lot of really good weapons that are still playing at the next level. And, um, you know, it's just it's going out every day and practicing and executing it, man. And I, I, I believe that that practice really translates to the game. And, um, you know, if you go and watch our practice tapes and, and practice every day, um, you know, you'll see the same guy out there com competing like it's a game, really taking pride and taking care of the ball. And, um, you know, I, I know that I always have weapons around me and my job is just to stay cool, calm and collected back there and try to get them, get them the ball the best way I can. So, um, you know, that's what I've done so far. I, I think, uh, I, that number, I wish that interception number was down to, to five or less than that. I know I, I want some of those throws back, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's just what I really pride myself on. And, um, you know, I'm going to continue doing that, um, you know, this year. I, I, I hope you'll see the same guy out there. Phenomenal. So uh, tell us what your next couple of months look like um, in preparation for the season. I know camp just ended. So, yeah, what do you, what do your next few months look like? Yeah, so we just finished up spring. We're um, finishing up this, this lifting program right now. So we'll be on this for the next couple of weeks. Um, we get some time off in May, which will be good. So I'll get to go home and spend some time with the family, um, you know, kind of just relax, get the body um, back and fresh. And then, you know, we're, we're rolling when when summer comes around, um, you know, the the uh, high school recruits will be in and we'll start our our summer program for two months all the way up until fall camp starts. So, um, you know, some some big days and big months coming up. Obviously, when these new recruits come in, we got to get them on board, you know, welcome them into the culture and, uh, you know, get, get, get right to work. So, um, you know, spring ball went great. And, you know, we're, we're really looking forward to, to getting back to work this summer. Grayson, I truly appreciate your time. Wish you the best of luck this upcoming season. And we definitely going to have to make that Madden game happen. Let's man. do it. Yeah, hit me up. Hit yeah. me up. We'll make it happen.